Okay, guys, today's lesson is 9.3, Classifying Polygons. Take out a sheet of paper and let's take some notes. Lesson 9.3. All right, first you need to write down polygon. A polygon is a closed plane figure with at least three sides. So write that down in your notes. It's a closed plane figure with at least three sides. Now, it just has to have three sides. It can also have four, five, six, seven, fifteen. Polygon is the main name for every shape with three sides or more. So a triangle is a polygon. A rectangle is a polygon. A pentagon is a polygon. So that is like the main title, and all the shapes fall below it. Now, a triangle is a polygon with three sides. We all know that. You can classify triangles by two different things. So in these notes, you can see that you can classify triangles by angle measures, and you can also classify triangles by side length. In Lesson 9.2, they're going to ask you to classify specific triangles. Now, when they ask you to do that, you're going to have to list two names. You're going to have to name it by its angle measure and name it by its side lengths. So, copy down these three triangles at the top and the three at the bottom. Now, the first one is an acute triangle. It has three acute angles. If you remember, acute angles are less than 90 degrees. Now a right triangle has right, one right triangle which is one 90 degree triangle and it is represented by that little box or square. An obtuse triangle is one obtuse angle which is greater than 90 degrees. Now an equilateral triangle has three congruent sides. Now, if you notice, these little tick marks are on the triangle. They use the tick marks to indicate congruent sides of a figure. So this one has a tick mark here, a tick mark here, and a tick mark here. That means all three sides are the exact same length. This, that is an equilateral triangle, three congruent sides, three all the same. Now. An isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. So, notice, we have one tick mark, but then we have these both have two on them. These are the same, th that will be the same. The ones with the two tick marks are equal, and the one with the one tick mark is not equal. It's a different length. Now, this last one is a scalene triangle. And this has no congruent sides because this has one tick mark, this has two tick marks, and this has three tick marks, meaning they all three are different lengths. So make sure you have this in your notes. Now, here's an example. Classify a triangle. So classify a triangle by its sides and angles. So first, I'm going to classify it by its sides. So I look and see what are the side lengths. Now this one is 8 and this one is 8. So it has two equal side lengths. And if I go back to my notes, the one that has two equal sides, at least two congruent sides, is an isosceles triangle right here in the middle, an isosceles triangle. So I know that my first classification is that this is an isosceles triangle right here. And then I look at my angle measures and it has a 90 degree angle measure, so I know it's a right triangle. So I did two things. First, I figured out that it was isosceles, and second, I figured out that it was a right triangle. So this would be an isosceles right triangle. Now, next, we have quadrilaterals. Now, we start that first part of the notes was triangles. This is quadrilaterals, which are four-sided figures. Now, you're going to want to copy down this nifty little chart. 
you're going to start with quadrilateral right here. So you write down a quadrilateral and it has four sides. Now from it, there are two things. You can go this way and you see that it, there's a trapezoid. Now a trapezoid has only exactly one pair of parallel sides. So that means this side and this side are parallel to each other. Only one pair of parallel sides. It still has four sides because it has to have four sides to be a quadrilateral. Now this is a parallelogram and parallelograms have both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So that means that these green sides are parallel and it means that the red sides are parallel. Now both pairs of opposite sides parallel. If I look at my rectangle and my square and my rhombus, they all three are parallelograms. So they all three fall under the parallelogram and all of them are quadrilaterals. So they have numerous names. A square can also be listed as a parallelogram and as a quadrilateral. It has three different names. So make sure you write down each of these shapes. If you need to, you can push pause and make sure you get this chart copied down in your notes. Now here is example two. It says, name the types of quadrilaterals that have both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So what it wants to know, what quadrilaterals, what quadrilaterals have both pairs, both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So now I go back to my chart and I look, okay, so there's my quadrilateral at the top. Now what one has both pairs of opposite sides parallel? Well that is right here. It's a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So I could say parallelogram and then underneath that I could also say a rectangle, a square, and a rhombus. So if you look here it says all parallelograms have opposite sides parallel. So all parallelograms have opposite sides parallel. And then it says parallelograms include rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. So that is just an example of how you can classify quadrilaterals. Now, a polygon is the name of all shapes. So a regular polygon has all sides congruent and all angles congruent. Now, we talked about triangles and we talked about squares and how they were quadrilaterals. Now polygons are, it's the top name to describe a triangle, a square, a pentagon, a hexagon. All of these are polygons. And you can also include um, octagon and decagon. It's anything that has all the sides are the exact same length. So, one really good example is in your book. Um, this is the real world problem solving example three. And I really liked it because it shows you how you can use this information in everyday life. So it says, a contractor is framing a regular octagonal gazebo. So here is a picture of the octagonal gazebo. It's very beautiful. And it says, write a formula for the perimeter of the gazebo in terms of the length of a side. So evaluate the formula for a side length of seven. So here's the blueprints. <coughs> and if I look at the blueprints, I can see that this has eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so my gazebo has eight sides, and I know that it is an octagon, a regular octagon. There's my key word, regular octagon. So that means all the sides are the exact same. So if I said, let's pretend we didn't even know that we wanted it to be seven feet, and I want it to work for any size gazebo, 
I could call this side x, but I would also know that this side is x, and this is x, and this is x, and this is x, 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 and x. All the sides are the exact same length because it's a regular octagon. So when would I ever use this? Well, let's pretend um, Jimmy wants a seven foot gazebo on each side, but let's pretend that Sally wants a 10 foot or that Sue wants a 17 foot or that Jim wants a five foot. So if you can use it for any size, you want to have a general equation so that you can use it for any size gazebo. What they did to find the perimeter is they said, okay, perimeter, I'm going to add up all my x's. So I'm going to add up all these eight x's, which really is eight times x. And that is a formula. So it says right here, the formula for the perimeter of is p equals 8x. And so for this specific gazebo, all you would then do is substitute in 7 for x right here, and you'd get a total of 56 feet. So the perimeter, whoops, the perimeter is 56 feet around. And that is all the notes for today. So... Hope you got everything done and have a great night.